This is a KGW News Special Edition. Good evening, everyone. A very happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to a special edition of KGW News. This is a live look from our Rose City Skycam this evening after a bluebird sunny day with great news for you. The sun's sticking around until next week. Ashley Grams will be here with your first forecast in just about three minutes. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. It is a day to give thanks and from Old Town to North Portland, free dinners were served up to those in need. Blair Bus kicks us off this holiday with how a hot meal can go a long way. We're serving our annual Thanksgiving feast. Thursday morning inside Union Gospel Mission in Old Town. Food in my belly. <laughs> A warm place to be. Thanksgiving is more than just a holiday. Basically, we like to open our doors every year, and anybody who has nowhere else to go can come and eat with us. Like Richard. I've been outside over about five years. He looks forward to this each November. I feel thankful. There is unfortunately a really big need, and um, we do primarily serve people who are experiencing homelessness, but there's also a lot of people in the neighborhood who maybe are housed but are just really financially strapped. I see a lot of people, some people are struggling. To know that there's a hot plate, it gives people hope. And not just for those sitting at the table. To be around and kind of on the ground level with everyone who's not as fortunate as they are is important. Volunteering has turned into a holiday tradition for Nicole and her two boys. It's very meaningful to her. Yes. And as people line the block. So we've got some clothes, we've got some hot coffee, some donuts. Uh, just, you know, brighten their day. Another tradition unfolds as this local business meets people where they are. It changes their day, you know, just their, their perspective for a minute. And I think we all deserve that. I think we all need a break. This is more like a Cajun meat-based gravy. Across the city in the Kenton neighborhood. Coming together really nice. Chef John Tobert prepares to feed the masses. And the people of God would say yes. And amen. What Thanksgiving is all about for us is giving back to the community. We cook a great A meal and provide an opportunity for people who are less fortunate. It means everything. You know, it's, uh, it's, so, it's so special to, to have a place to come to. Since everyone deserves a taste of community, especially on Thanksgiving. Oh, it's Thanksgiving. I just wanted to, I really wanted to come out and uh, be with people. An opportunity to come by and get some love on a plate. Blair Best. KGW News. Yeah, special thanks to those who spent the day giving back. All right, another headline. Southbound lanes of I-5 across the Markham Bridge are back open this evening after a fatal crash involving a motorcycle this morning. When officers arrived just before 10, they found a male motorcyclist down in the middle of the span with people giving him first aid. He was taken to the hospital but died from his injuries. This is the 65th fatal crash in Portland this year. Police say it doesn't appear any other vehicles were involved. Anyone with information is asked to contact Portland Police. All right, let's take a quick look at the roads out there. Maybe you're about to head home or send relatives on their way after a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner, though. No hurry, though. This is I-5 headed north at McAdam. Smooth sailing there and around the rest of the metro. You know what? Speaking of things to be thankful for, Ashley Grams. How about all that sunshine today? It sounds like there's more where that came from. Absolutely beautiful. As you said, bluebird day, blue skies. I hope you got a chance to get outside. I got a chance to take a walk with my family today. Absolutely beautiful. We're sitting cloudless here in the Rose City, about 42 degrees tonight. Tomorrow, going to be just about more of the same. Let's talk about those temperatures. We're going to start here near freezing and most places in the Willamette Valley going to be near that 32 degree mark. Some areas going to be below that. Tomorrow, we're going to be lucky to make it up to 50 degrees most of our day sitting right there in the 40s. So a chilly day and not just here in the Rose City, but also if you're heading down to Eugene, if you're heading to Autzen Stadium, uh, it's going to be a cold one as well. You're going to make it all the way down to 32 degrees during that game, but going to be a little bit lucky because we're not seeing any rain. And for those of you heading to the other rivalry game, maybe you're heading up to Seattle to that Apple Cup again, crisp and clear out there, but it's going to be cold. Might want to bring that scarf, the hat, the gloves, all of those things. But while we're sitting with this crisp, clear day, uh, we have some changes coming next week. We'll talk more about that in your seven day forecast coming up, David. So wear the layers, but bring the sunglasses. Thanks, Definitely. Ashley. <laughs> As the holiday season officially gets underway, a Portland landmark is already sparkling with the Christmas spirit. Yes, the view outside the Pittock Mansion. It's always breathtaking, though, for a few weeks. The inside is giving it a little healthy competition. John Goodwin shows us why. Due to 
during the holiday season, the mansion really becomes magical. It's a beautiful event where the community comes in to get the house digged up for the community. From Portland's best viewpoint, the celebration of history and nature is year-round. And Every year we choose a different theme. This year the theme is Winter Wonderland. Gingerbread houses. Paula Gangopadye is the CEO of Pittick Mansion. Her excitement shines as bright as the Winter Wonderland inside. Thanks to almost 75 volunteers, 14 of the mansion's rooms are full of Christmas spirit. Many rooms of the house gets, you know, they get decked up. It just brings um, a warmth to the house. When you first walk in, you're greeted by Rhoda's tree, covered in ornaments handmade by the Pittock's granddaughter, Rhoda Adams, who grew up in the mansion. It just adds that touch that, you know, we are still living history and, uh, you know, we have that connection between the past and the present and hopefully it'll be carried on in the future. Look at this. <laughs> Pittock Mansion's Christmas display runs until January 4th. Visitors can buy time tickets at pittockmansion.org. Whether you're visiting from out of town or you live here, come enjoy the history and nature of one of Portland's icons. It just makes it feel like a home. You know, it just bring, makes it just so warm and cozy and so real. Don't miss out. Uh, it's a magical place up on the hill and the uniqueness cannot be duplicated in any of the other experiences. In Northwest Portland, John Goodwin, KGW News. Love the bathtub there. All right, from the West Hills to downtown, let's give you a live look at Pioneer Courthouse Square. If it's looking a bit dark in the middle, well, by this time tomorrow, that 75-foot Douglas fir, it's going to be a showstopper. Santa may be flipping the switch, but our very own Blair Best is hosting the festivities. Part of the fun, a sing-along with Thomas Lauderdale from Pink Martini. Celebration starts at 5.30 tomorrow night. If you can't make it in person, do not despair. You can watch it live on KGW.com or KGW+. Plus. You will not see it on air, though, because of college football. All right, a couple other headlines to get to this evening. Negotiations are set to resume tomorrow with the Portland teacher strike now stretching into a fourth week. One major sticking point around parental involvement in decisions about class sizes. District officials said in a statement they were disappointed to receive responses from the union that did not directly address the district's proposals around what are called class size committees. Now, this is all about how schools will decide whether to add extra students to classes when they reach a set threshold. Teachers we spoke to before the holiday say they are anxious to see a finished contract. That's been the goal all along is to get back as soon as possible. Um, I think people might be a little frustrated because we just want to get back. We miss our jobs, we miss our students, we miss our schools, right? And we just want to get back. And I think that any frustration that's coming up is just that we just want to get back. Keep in mind nearly all the other issues have been settled, including cost of living increases, planning and prep time. It is still in theory possible students could return to class Monday if there is an agreement. This evening, we are continuing to follow a major decision by a Harney County judge who ruled that Oregon's measure 114 is unconstitutional. That means what would have been one of the strictest gun control laws in the country remains on pause pending an appeal. Ashley Grams with that story. It was great news um, that we were really pulling on because it was kind of a last hope for us. That's Brian Mumford, owner of PDX Arsenal, and he's talking about a Harney County judge's decision to permanently block Measure 114. So with Measure 114, from the beginning to the end, it was misleading. It was not organized. There were not the proper communications made to have this work. The ballot initiative first passed by voters in 2022 demands stricter gun laws by requiring federal criminal background checks, gun safety training, and banning the sale of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. While a federal judge ruled the measure constitutional earlier this year, a state judge said it violates the Oregon Constitution. Here's Lewis and Clark professor Tung Yin to explain. So basically any law, in this case a ballot measure, but still counts as a law, has to, if you want to think of it this way, run through both gauntlets. 
to be valid. If you fail one or the other, then the law is no good. Circuit Judge Robert Rascio explained in his ruling, the measure violates an Oregonian's right to bear arms, particularly the section that would ban high capacity magazines. Rascio says it would effectively ban all firearm magazines. Mumford agrees, arguing most magazines can be modified, which would make them illegal under the measure. Now, for those who understand the anatomy of a, of a handgun magazine, those base plates on those are removable to service them, clean them, replace springs. That means that any magazine and all magazines that have a detachable base plate those would not be allowed even at the 10 round limit. As for lift every voice organ proponents of 114, they still believe organ voters want to see the measure implemented. Although they weren't available to go on camera, in a statement, Reverend Mark Knutson said voters were clear that these life saving policies should be the law in Oregon. We know these policies have been upheld by courts in other states, and though we anticipated Judge Rascio would rule the way he did, we have been preparing for the appellate process for some time now. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum says she plans to appeal at the appellate level and Governor Tina Kotek voiced her support. So the fight is not over. No, and then of course, whichever side win or loses at the appellate level can seek review from the Oregon State Supreme Court. But a case like this, um, you know, high profile, very wide reaching in terms of its impact on Oregonians is, you know, there's a good chance the State Supreme Court would weigh in. Ashley Grams, KGW News.